Barracuda Origins. I'm Andrew Lapamardo, your narrator, and this is Marvelous Videos. In the Marvel Universe, the Punisher is known for being ruthless and brutal. However, he has an arch nemesis who is even more bloodthirsty than him. This character is known as Barracuda. When the Punisher fights for the good, Barracuda fights for the evil. And the two share an equally high pile of dead bodies underneath them. We are never told the original name that Barracuda was born as. But since he is pitted against the Punisher, it will not be a surprise that he is a merciless killer, among other things. But why is he so hell-bent on destroying Frank Castle? What turned him into such a cruel and despicable human being? We'll answer all these questions in this video as we explore everything about Barracuda, the ultimate enemy of the Punisher. So, without further delay, let us dive right into the video. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Barracuda Origin The character of Barracuda was introduced in the Max Imprint universe and was created by the writer Garth Ennis, artist Goran Parlov, and Howard Chaikin. His origin story is revealed to us in the comic book The Punisher, Volume 7, Issue Number 53. It follows the story arc titled Long Cold Dark, which started with Issue 50 and lasted until Issue 54. Lying on the brink of death, Barracuda's mind wanders into his past life as a child and we witness his suffering. Barracuda was born and raised in Boca Raton, Florida. His father was an African American and his mother was of Irish and French descent. He also had two younger brothers and a sister. As the eldest child, he always felt the need to protect his siblings. And the monster that they needed protection from was living in their own home in the form of Barracuda's father. During World War II, his father was a member of the 827th Tank Destroyer Battalion. However, after coming back home, he became an alcoholic and a brutal one at that. He would beat Barracuda on a daily basis and threaten to hurt his younger siblings if he ever said no to his father. Barracuda was always scared of him, but he had to comply for the sake of his brothers and sister. His father would always say that he wanted to make Barracuda strong so that he could survive in this cruel world, and that this is why he tortured his son so much. But his definition of a life lesson was more like a punishment. In fact, one time, he forcefully made Barracuda put his hand on a burning grill. He kept yelling in pain, but his father said that if Barracuda did not do as he was asked, his siblings would suffer the consequences. So, yet again, he endured. When he tried to take his hand off the grill, his father called him names like loser, little bitch, and faggot. After this incident, his father abandoned them and never came back. All the childhood torture and trauma built up inside Barracuda, and as he grew older, he decided to find his father to take revenge on him. But he never found him, so he started to take the rage out on the world. When Barracuda began to go to elementary school, he came up with his own way of punishing the bullies. One day, he pushed his thumbs in the eyes of one of his classmates who was bullying him. As a result, the classmate had to be taken to the hospital, and Barracuda ended up in a juvenile detention center. During his time in jail, he castrated a potential rapist with a simple knife. This incident brought him to the attention of the Army Special Forces Colonel, who was immediately fascinated upon seeing Barracuda's strength. The Colonel saw potential in Barracuda and decided to enroll him as part of a special program to enlist disturbed youngsters at an early age for military purposes of the U.S. Army. In the years that follow, Barracuda received a great education as well as extensive Special Forces training and soon became a Green Beret. He was then deployed on missions at the age of 20 and started to become even more ruthless. Barracuda would commit all kinds of crimes in the name of the military, like rape, murder, and even cannibalism. In fact, he even started taking cocaine and committed atrocious cruelties against innocent people. Eventually, by the age of 24, Barracuda decided to leave the Green Berets and began a life of crime by joining gangs and working as a guy you would hire to have people killed. Amazing Barracuda Story from The Punisher, Volume 7 Barracuda made his first appearance in the comic books in The Punisher, Volume 7, Issue 31, which was released in March 2006 with a cover date of May 2006. 
It follows the story arc titled Barracuda and runs from issue 31 to issue 36. Now, before we get into the story, we would like to give a spoiler disclaimer as we will be exploring the entire story arc from the Punisher Volume 7. At the beginning of issue 31, we will see a wounded Frank Castle, aka the Punisher, standing at the edge of a boat named Barracuda. The ocean around him is full of dead bodies and severed body parts. This is a direct reference to the species of fish called Barracuda, which is known for being a predatory fish with vicious behavior. However, this scene is not where the story of Barracuda begins. Now, the Punisher has been tracking the source of high-grade cocaine and finally found the dealers. He reaches their hideout and kills all of them. Just then, he sees a man in the bathroom who is naked and tied up. He tells the Punisher where the coke is and then asks for his protection because, apparently, there are people who want him dead and he cannot ask the police for help. But the Punisher leaves him by himself and runs away. Meanwhile, there is an office party going on that Harry Ebbing has thrown for his employees. Harry Ebbing is the CEO of the energy company known as Dynaco. Before Harry took over the company, Dynaco was failing. But the moment he was hired, he immediately fired about 90% of the company's staff members because they were useless. Then he created a close inner circle with the rest of the members and formed a team. He told them to make sure of two rules. The first one is that they should always stick together. And the second one is that they should always go to him if they ever have a problem. Due to his teamwork and efforts, just in a matter of six months, he brought Dynaco to limelight and the stocks of the company went through the roof. Now, another employee, by the name of Dermot Leary, was Harry Ebbing's second-in-command. Basically, Harry was always trying to groom Dermot in his shadow. At the office party, Dermot tells Harry that they are in big trouble because Cy Stevens, another member of their inner circle, might go to the feds about the illegal plans they have for the company. Dermot tried to take care of it on his own by hiring a few people to kill Stevens but it looks like he was found by the police as the only survivor of one of the Punisher's slaughters. So Cy Stevens is the same guy who was previously asking the Punisher for help. Now, at a restaurant, Frank Castle is watching the news broadcast that talks about how the Punisher took down the drug gang and how the survivor has still not been identified. So he decides to go down to the 63rd precinct because it occurs to him that he probably should have listened to that man's story. The Punisher walks into the police station with the help of a fake ID that mentions him as NYPD Lieutenant Joseph D. Carson and gains access to Stevens' jail cell. He then tries to create a diversion by throwing a white phosphorus grenade into an empty room and then in the middle of the chaos, he escapes with Stevens. Back at Harry's office, he finds out about the incident and is even more scared because the Punisher is an opponent that he would never thought of facing. His task of getting rid of Stevens has become an even bigger issue, so he decides to bring out the big guns. We now see Barracuda for the first time, towards the end of issue number 31, as Harry gives him a phone call. Barracuda is resting in his boat in Miami with some woman and opium. A vicious looking rattlesnake bites the woman, and with his bare hands, Barracuda kills the snake. But the woman is now dead. So he just casually kicks her body into the ocean and heads out in his boat. Now Harry Eben has taken his Dynaco team on a skiing trip, where he tells Dermot not to worry about their Stevens problem because it has been taken care of. Harry's wife, Alice Eben, also seems to be flirting quite a bit with Dermot. Meanwhile, Stevens is telling the Punisher that Harry wants him dead because of the secret illegal plan he is about to execute. Recently, there was a few blackouts in Florida, and during that time, electricity was at a premium. Since Dynaco supplies the power, Harry noticed that the value of its shares were growing immensely. After that, Dermot, Harry's golden boy, came up with a new profitable plan to black out regions of Florida at random in order to increase the stock's value. But when they discussed this idea in the meeting, Stevens spoke up against it, claiming it was highly risky and illegal. He was trying to convince the others that they should not go ahead with this plan since it might put the company's future in danger. And just the following day, he got kidnapped. Now, back in Miami, Barracuda is driving in his convertible and stops an SUV. Without uttering a single word, he starts shooting at the SUV and kills everyone inside except one person named Horace. Barracuda then demands payment for the hit conducted on Horace. 
The man tells him that he has the money but does not have it on him at the moment. So, Barracuda throws Horace in the trunk of his car and drives away. Meanwhile, in New York, after hearing the whole story, the Punisher leaves Stevens alone in the restaurant and decides to make Dinoco's corrupt plan his business. He takes a flight to Miami, since Harry is about to hold the shareholders meeting at which his plan will take action. Now, Harry Ebbing has given Barracuda the job of killing and destroying the Punisher. He informs Barracuda that he does not need to catch a flight since the Punisher is on his way to Miami. Just then, Barracuda spots the Punisher at Miami Airport. The Punisher gets into a taxi and Barracuda follows him. He then hits the taxi off the road and the accident leaves the Punisher unconscious. After a while, when the Punisher regains consciousness, he tries to cut the ropes that bind him using a Swiss army knife. He is in the trunk of Barracuda's car, and as soon as it opens, he kicks Barracuda right in the face and gets out of the trunk. However, he's already had several wounds and a concussion, so Barracuda easily lands a punch on him. The Punisher then stabs Barracuda's right eye with his knife, but it looks like Barracuda does not even feel pain since he continues to punch and kick the Punisher. He then throws the Punisher inside a shack, where he gets a hold of a hatchet and cuts off four fingers on Barracuda's right hand. Now, on the other hand, Alice Ebbing and Dermot have shared multiple sexual encounters and are now talking about their mutual dislike of Harry. He and the Punisher continue fighting at Barracuda's shack as the Punisher tries to choke Barracuda using a barbed wire. Barracuda is now heavily bleeding but does not seem to back down from the fight. Frank Castle then knocks off Barracuda's front teeth with the word f embedded in them. Even so, this does not stop Barracuda from attacking the Punisher, and he manages to knock him out for good. Now, at their hotel, Harry tells Dermot that the Punisher followed them to Miami, and the one who gave him this information was Stevens himself. Cy Stevens then walks in the room and greets Dermot, who is in shock. On the other hand, Barracuda has tied up the Punisher and Horace on his boat and is taking them out to sea. He tells them a few stories from the time when he used to go on missions as a Green Beret. During one of the missions, he witnessed a shark eating a man for the first time. And in another, he came across an African tribal chief who cooked and ate his prisoners. He then describes how no one in his Green Beret squad would eat these roasted human body parts. Barracuda then admits that he was the only one who had enough guts to actually eat it. Now, once his story ends, he tosses both Horus and the Punisher into the ocean. A shark eventually appears as a result of all the blood from their wounds. Barracuda then starts singing a song as he notices the shark heading towards them. Luckily, the Punisher is able to break free from the ropes and swims to the surface, but as soon as Barracuda spots the Punisher's face, he starts shooting, saying that this is against the rules. The Punisher then goes back into the water and sees the shark ate both of Horus's feet, but somehow he is still alive. Barracuda finds joy in this entire escapade. Now, at Harry's hotel, Dermot is not okay with the fact that Harry has taken Cy Stevens back as part of their Dynaco team. Stevens starts sobbing and apologizing to Harry for betraying him, and Harry immediately acts as if he is the father and tells him that everything is going to be okay. Dermot is overcome with rage at Harry's decision and talks back to him. Harry then slaps Dermot and warns him not ever to insult him again. In the water, the Punisher is trying to keep Horace calm, but the shark does not attack, but he soon finds out that Horace is a drug dealer. So, when the shark starts heading their way, the Punisher uses Horace as a distraction and literally feeds him to the shark. This makes Barracuda think that he has successfully finished his job and that the Punisher is dead. But in reality, the Punisher swam away. Meanwhile, Harry starts telling Dermot and Stevens the story of how he met Barracuda. Apparently, 20 years ago, Harry was convicted of insider trading in the state of California, and as a result, he was sent to a maximum security prison. When he received threats from two men on his first day, he made a deal with the most notorious inmate in prison, Barracuda. Harry offered Barracuda a great deal of money, and the next day, the two men were found with their eyelids sewn shut. Barracuda had stitched their eye sockets with each other's testicles and their eyes were never found. Now, as Barracuda is heading for the shore, we see the Punisher is still alive and holding onto a rope on the side of Barracuda's boat. When Barracuda meets Harry and shows him his severed fingers, Harry doubles the payment and then gives him a new task. In Dermot's room, he and Alice have just finished having sex when Barracuda barges in with a machete. Alice immediately gets scared 
and tells him that they will do anything he asks. On the docks, the Punisher is finally conscious and goes into Barracuda's shack in order to get some food, clothes, and a weapon for the upcoming fight against the Dinoco. Now, Barracuda reveals to Alice that Harry is paying him to follow her and find out where she goes at night. But he says that if they can make him a better offer, he will not say anything to Harry because this is just business for him. So Alice tells him that she and Dermot are going to expose Harry's plan to the public, after which Dermot will take his place in the company. They are going to execute this plan on the same night when Harry has scheduled the cruise for the shareholders. Later on, Barracuda decides to be on Alice's and Dermot's side and tells Harry that he followed Alice at night, but she did not do anything suspicious. Harry then asks Barracuda to continue keeping an eye on her even on the cruise. Now, after some time, Stevens accidentally walks in on Alice and Dermot having sex. When he tries to go to Harry, Dermot ends up killing him. Barracuda comes to fix the situation and throws Stevens' body out the window on top of a pile of garbage. Soon after on the cruise, Barracuda praises Dermot's confidence in front of Alice and walks away. Alice then tells Dermot that Barracuda is the most dangerous man they will ever deal with, which is why they need to kill him on their own. On the other hand, the Punisher gets ready for his attack as he follows the cruise ship on Barracuda's boat. Now, even before Harry Ebbing lands on the cruise ship in his helicopter, his plans for blacking out parts of Florida go public, and he is surrounded by the media. Meanwhile, Alice tries to seduce Barracuda in order to distract him so that Dermot can attack from behind. He tries to hit Barracuda with a metal pipe, but misses. Barracuda then realizes that he has been betrayed, so he attacks Alice. This gives Dermot enough time to hit Barracuda on the head with the metal pipe several times, which knocks him unconscious. The two then throw Barracuda's body into the water, but we see his eyes open, which means he is obviously alive. On the cruise ship, the Dinoco shareholders watch a live news broadcast about this and start panicking. So, Dermot sets his plan into motion by saying words of encouragement about how he will save the company and Harry is the only one who will go down due to these plans. Now, as it turns out, the Punisher has planted two bombs on the cruise ship. He contacts them and demands that they hand over Harry and Barracuda and give themselves up to the FBI. But Dermot denies taking any action and then Barracuda appears at the edge of the ship and tells the Punisher that the charge is live. The Punisher then presses a button and the cruise ship blast, resulting in the deaths of almost everyone on board. Soon after, Barracuda climbs on his boat and the Punisher is waiting with a shotgun for him. He shoots Barracuda in the middle of his head and later sees a shark near the boat and thinks that Barracuda has finally died. However, the Punisher could not be more wrong because Barracuda later appears once again in issue number 50, which is the start of the long, cold, dark story arc. This marks the final encounter of Barracuda with the Punisher as he has a long-standing score to settle with him. Barracuda managed to track down Frank Castle's previous associates from the MI6 department and tortured them in order to gather more information about the Punisher. This led to the discovery of Frank Castle's baby daughter, Sarah, about whom he had no idea. Her mother is a deceased CIA agent, Catherine O'Brien, and her sister, Barbara O'Brien, was taking care of Sarah. So Barracuda decided to kidnap the infant from the daycare center in order to lead the Punisher into his trap so that he could finally take his revenge. Eventually, the Punisher and Barracuda engage in a series of gruesome fights. Later on in issue number 54, Barracuda was finally killed when the Punisher chopped off both his arms and emptied an entire magazine of an AK-47 right into his face. What makes him so powerful? Barracuda's huge body and muscles provide him with almost superhuman strength, which is why it is so hard for even the Punisher to kill him. As a child, Barracuda used to be skinny and look weak. However, when he joined the Green Berets, he received proper U.S. Army Special Forces training, which enhanced his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Due to being in the military, Barracuda also became a trained infantryman and sniper. When he returned after the events of the Dynaco Company, he had only one functioning eye. Despite that, he proved himself to be an excellent marksman. His time in the military also taught him several fighting and infiltration tactics, as he also received survival training. 
When it comes to fighting an opponent, Bakuda refuses to back down even if he is on the brink of his death. He has a bizarre sense of humor, and despite having such a dark past, he is often optimistic about his missions. One thing that Barracuda takes great pleasure in is torturing his enemies. He can definitely sit and watch them suffer for hours. His character also acts as a mirror to the Punisher because even though they fight for different reasons, both of them are equally brutal. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.